Uh, hello, good afternoon. Welcome to Introduction to Philosophy again. So, um, this week we are moving away from philosophy of religion and we will be talking about uh, metaphysics. So, um, before I you know, go into the details, uh, I want to say a few things about what metaphysics is. So, um, there is really one question that metaphysics is concerned with and um, that is the nature of reality. So, to study metaphysics is to be concerned with the nature of reality. Um, now, in order to understand, in order to get a grip on the nature of reality, um, philosophers are usually also concerned with another related question, which is, what is out there? Um, well, the two questions are related because, uh, you know, if you ask uh, the common person, uh, what is the nature of reality, uh, he will tell you that, well, um, there are certain things that, uh, that are, you know, out there in the world, like tables and chairs and animals and other people. Now, uh, to say that, uh, in order to, to say that, um, that is, uh, to say that is to assume that, uh, that reality is such that it, it consists of physical things. In addition, uh, the common person will also tell you that um, he has certain thoughts in his mind, he is thinking certain thoughts, he has certain feelings, he uh, sees certain things with his sense organs, like his eyes. So, when he says that, he's also assuming, uh, for the most part, that there are uh, mental things that are different from physical things. So, so you see that there is this sort of uh, common sense view of what reality consists in. Um, now, what philosophers are concerned to do is to ask questions about this common sense view. Uh, philosophers are concerned to ask whether this common sense view is true uh, and if it can stand up to philosophical scrutiny. So, uh, the history of metaphysics uh, is actually a, the history of philosophers trying to grapple with this basic question of what uh, reality is and what is out there. And maybe more, some philosophers even question whether there is an out there in the first place. So, um, so very briefly, uh, you know, the, 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 as I said, the history of philosophy, the history of metaphysics is a history of philosophers trying to um, um, ask the question of what the nature of reality is and to provide certain answers that they have come up with. So today, uh, we are going to look at the views of this French philosopher by the name of René Descartes. Uh, some of you may actually have heard of him. Uh, he's the one, he's the 16th century philosopher that came up with that famous phrase, I think, therefore I am. We are going to look at that phrase uh, later on in the semester. Uh, but for today, we are just going to look at his views of metaphysics, his view of the nature of reality. So, um, for Descartes, uh, his, um, he, starts, uh, he starts his metaphysical uh, uh, views by talking about um, this thing called substance. So, um, um, you know, uh, for Descartes, uh, he, Descartes believes that the world uh, base can be divided into some really basic things that exist uh, and which make up the building blocks of reality. Uh, and he believes that the most basic building block of reality is substance. So, um, Descartes defines a substance as a thing which so exists that it needs no other thing in order to exist. Uh, which is another way of saying that a substance is that most basic thing, uh, uh, the most basic unit of reality um, that um, it is so basic that it, can uh, that it can independently exist on its own. So, according to Descartes, there are three basic kinds of substances. And the three kinds of substances are God, mind, and body. Now, um, God is the, you know, uh, according to uh, Descartes, uh, God exists and God is the most basic thing uh, in the sense that he is able to exist without needing anything else to exist. Um, now, you are, he got this idea from earlier philosophers like Aquinas and you are probably familiar with this idea from, you know, from thinking, from reading about Aquinas a couple of weeks ago. So, besides God, there is also mind and body. Now, mind and body are strictly speaking not as basic as God because they, had, they have to have been created by God to come into existence. Now, um, uh, let's start with mind. So, according to Descartes, mind is a thinking and unextended substance. Uh, we all have minds, we all have mental experiences, and our mental experiences, you know, we, we uh, consist of thinking certain thoughts, having certain feelings, uh, and perceiving certain things. 
um, and you know that mental experiences are uh, they, they are their nature is uh, is that they are made of well thoughts thought content they do not exist in space so strictly speaking uh, even the brain is not mine the brain is actually part of the body it is because the brain is something that exists in space whereas mind is not something that exists in space which brings us to the next substance which is body now um, body of which the brain is a part of uh, is something that is unthinking and extended now body doesn't just refer to our physical bodies uh, it also refers to uh, things that exist in the physical world like chairs and tables and automobiles and things like that um, so body the the main characteristic of body is that it is unthinking and extended it is extended because it occupies uh, length breadth and depth in space it is unthinking because because it is not mine so so for Descartes there are these three substances God, mind, and body. So um, Descartes is the first uh, philosopher in history to come up with this distinction between mind and body. Uh, philosophers before him, um, like Aquinas and Aristotle and Plato, basically, you know, assume that there is no problem with uh, being able to know the world. So they didn't bother to find to, to dis distinguish between mind and body. Now, um, so Descartes was the first person to make this distinction and we see that this distinction has uh, carried on to today because even today we very unproblematically assume that there is a distinction uh, between mind and body. However, um, um, Descartes view that there is uh, of mind and body, if you, uh, Descartes distinction between mind and body gives rise to certain problems and these problems are problems that we actually haven't been able to solve even today. So there are two main problems with, them, uh, with making a distinction with, between mind and body. Two problems. So the first problem is this: um, if you make a distinction between mind and body, uh, how is mind body interaction possible? How do you explain the interaction between mind and body? Um, again, in our common sense view, uh, if you ask the common person, he will tell you that you know there is no problem with believing that there is an interaction between mind and body. I mean, on a very common sense view, um, if I think I'm going to extend my fingers now, look, my fingers extend. If I want to curl my fingers into a fist, uh, it curls into a fist. So um, there is this, um, we, we kind of naively and uh, unproblematically assume that, you know, whatever my mind thinks is translated into actions of my body. So we assume that there is no problem between mind and body interaction. Um, or you know when I look out the window and see a tree uh, I unproblematically assume that I naively assume that there is a physical object called a tree out there and light bounces off the trees which impacts my optic nerves and causes me to see the tree but you must remember that the tree and the optic nerve are, are body they are physical things whereas the my seeing the tree is a mental experience so again if you think about it carefully how just how does the um, physical uh, thing that is the tree and the light waves cause me to have this mental experience or how does mine cause my uh, cause me to have uh, to undertake this action of curling my hands into a fist or extending my fingers um, this is a problem for Descartes and it should be a problem for us because remember that um, mind and body are supposed to have nothing in common uh, one is mind is unextended and uh, thinking and unextended whereas body is unthinking and extended they are diametrically opposite from each other they have nothing in common so how can two things which have nothing in common possibly interact with each other um, and unfortunately well I mean maybe fortunately uh, many philosophers have tried to come up with, with an answer to this question over the centuries um, there is no space here to uh, come in to, to try to answer this question uh, but uh, in my next video, which is on Leibniz, you will see that Leibniz, uh, who, who is another philosopher, actually tries to give an answer to this question, and it is a very interesting answer. Um, so, for the moment, we are going to leave this first problem unsolved. Okay, now let's look at the second problem. Mm, the second problem is the problem of other minds. So, uh, what is the problem of other minds? Well, let's take me for, for, for example. Uh, right now, I'm sitting here in this room, I'm looking at the camera, uh, I'm looking around and I'm seeing things in this room um, so I'm having mental experiences and from these mental experiences I can infer that there is a mind that is uh, having all these mental experiences but 
even though I meet other people, I cannot, uh, you know, I cannot experience their minds. Uh, I cannot experience uh, things from their perspective. And similarly, you are unable to experience things from my perspective. You are unable to see the things that I see now. You are unable to think the thoughts that I think now. So here's the the, the problem is that I am I'm kind of trapped in my own mind, and you guys are trapped in your own minds too. Um, I can't be sure that there are other minds around uh, that are responding to my words or my actions. Um, I can't be other. Can't, I can't be sure that those other minds are really minds and not just computers or zombies or robots. Uh, and similarly, you also cannot be sure that this uh, this thing here that's talking to you right now is a mind. Uh, you can't be sure that I'm a mind and not just a robot or a zombie, because it's for the simple reason that you simply can't get inside my mind and see things from my perspective. Um, so you know, uh, if the the mind body distinction gives rise to the problem of other minds. Um, if the only thing I can experience are my own mental experiences, how can I possibly be certain that other minds exist? So briefly speaking, um, you know, to, to summarize everything, um, Descartes' uh, mind-body distinction is a very important distinction in the history of philosophy. Uh, it is a distinction that we are familiar with and which we continue to use today. Now, we unproblematically assume that there is a distinction between mind and body but that, however, leads to the unfortunate problem, which is that uh, we, we are unable to account for how mind and body interact. We are also unable to account for how can there be other minds. So Descartes' uh, philosophy is, a, well, you can say it's a mixed bag. Um, they are, they are, it's a very influential uh, worldview, which we continue to hold today. But at the same time, it is also uh, fraught with many um, you know, difficulties. Uh, and these difficulties are difficulties that we philosophers today still don't really have a satisfactory solution to. Um, okay, so um, that's all for right now. Um, 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 I will leave you. Uh, I will leave you with this for now, and um, think about all these thoughts for a little bit, and um, stay tuned for my next video on Leibniz. Thank you.